hand printed and in this video I'm going to show you how to mix up your own fabric screen printing inks using pigment and binder. Now there is a choice when you're screen printing onto fabric between making your own inks and using pre-mixed inks. If you're using pre-mixed inks, the ones that we have are going to look something like this. We've got Speedball fabric screen printing ink and we've got Permacet fabric screen printing ink. You don't need to mix any binder in or anything like that. You can use them straight out the pot. You can mix them with each other to make different shades if you like. If you are making your own inks, you'll make them out of pigment and binder. So binder is like a colourless screen printing ink, that's your base. And then the pigments are like food colourings, they're very, very strong pigments. And the advantage of that is you can mix any shade you like and get exactly how you want. The colours are usually a little bit more translucent than the pre-mixed inks, although it depends what shade you are going for. And it also can be tricky to get the exact shade again. So if you know you're going to print a long edition or um, a large amount of garment, something like that, or fabric, it might be easier to use a pre-mixed ink because you know you can get more of the same colour. Whereas if you're making your own, you need to make sure you've made enough of it in the beginning so you don't have to go back and try and colour match your own um, shade, which can be quite tricky. I would also mention that for me personally, if I'm going to use black, I'd always use a pre-mixed, like the Speedball or the Permacet. It's just a lot easier to get a full black. If you're making black yourself, you have to use quite a lot of black pigments in with your binder before it stops being grey. And so for me, if I want a true black, it just makes sense to use a pre-mixed black. When we are making our own inks in the hand-printed studio, we like to use these pots, but you can use jam jars or something similar if you want to. We reuse these over and over again. You want something with a lid that will seal because you want to keep the air out of the ink to keep it lasting for as long as possible. These inks do last for quite a long time when they're mixed up. Occasionally they'll go a bit lumpy and sometimes a bit smelly. So at that point you need to throw them away if you can't use them. But they do keep for a while as long as you keep them with an airtight lid. So be aware of that. So when you're mixing your own inks, you're going to start with a binder. And it might be hand printed fabric screen printing binder or it might be Permacet's print paste. Both will work very similarly. And you want to start by decanting some binder into your pot. We always start with the binder and not the pigment. And you want to get enough of that to last for your project because the pigment really isn't going to add any bulk to the ink, just colour. So always use a clean spoon in the binder pot because you don't want any of the pigment accidentally getting into your binder. You want to keep it as clean as possible. We also have smaller tubs of each of these types of binder so you don't have to get it in this massive size. But in the studio, we get through quite a bit of it. So these are what the pigments look like. I've got yellow and turquoise here. I'm going to use these to make a green, but it's very, very strong and you only use dots of it at a time. I'm going to start with my yellow and I really am just going to put a little drop of it in. I'm going to use one of these plastic palette knives because they get in the pot to just get a small quantity. Be really careful with the pigment colours and you'll want to wear an apron, maybe even gloves because they have such strong colours, they will stain your clothing and your hands. You want to make sure you mix these colours really, really well. You don't want any blobs of unmixed binder or blobs of unmixed pigment in there because it's going to show up when you pull that ink over your screen later on. So now I've got a really bright sort of egg yolk yellow there. I'm not going to add any more yellow at this point, just make sure it's nice and fully mixed. And now I'm going to add my turquoise. I'm going to use a fresh palette knife. And this is really strong, so, and some of them more liquidy than others. This one's more liquid than the yellow, so be careful it doesn't splash. And then I'm just going to put a drop in to start with. I'm going to build it up really slowly. What you don't want to do is go too far, because you can't take the pigment out once it's mixed in. So you can already see this is going to be quite a strong green, just with that tiny drop of turquoise. So really, really start small with these. Some of the pigments are stronger than others as well. So don't assume if you had to use lots of yellow that you'll need lots of turquoise or magenta. They all behave ever so slightly differently. So it's best to be cautious and start small. And here I have a nice fresh green. What I like to do if my colours are looking a little bit bright and plasticky, which might not be the look you're going for. If it is, then you can stop here. But if it isn't, one of the things I like to do to make my colours look a little bit more natural or earthy is add a little bit of its complementary colour. Now the complementary colour to green is pink, so I'm just going to add the tiniest amount of magenta 
I'm going to start off just absolutely tiny, tiny and just dot that in. And what that's going to do is knock the colour back a shade towards brown and make it a little bit more earthy, a little bit more neutral toned. Just keep adding tiny bits until you like the look of it. I'm going to add a little bit more of that magenta. Another tiny little dab. I don't want to turn this colour brown. I just want to turn that green a little bit more towards a earthy shade. There we go. And here, hopefully you can see that it's become a little bit more earthy green. Now, when you're mixing your inks, you might find that you accidentally make them too strong. Now, if you've done that, the temptation would be to add more binder to knock it back, but that's really going to make a lot of ink and it's really going to be a waste. You're going to have to need to add a lot of binder to your ink before you get to a paler shade. Start off with a fresh pot of binder. So I've got my binder here. I'm now going to, so I've got my colour here. Let's say that it's too strong for my needs. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit in to this new binder and give it a mix. That way I'm diluting my colour but I'm not wasting loads of ink. I mean, it might be that I use this for another project or adapt it for another colour. You can always adapt it into a different shade if you want to. So here, just by adding the binder and then adding a, a spatula full of that ink, I've got a paler green here compared to my other one, which was maybe too strong for my project. So don't add binder to this one. You're just gonna end up wasting ink. Start a new one, add a little bit of your colour to it and go from there. You're going to have a much easier time of it. Now, like most screen printing inks that are water-based, all of these ones are water-based, they will need heat setting. So after you've done your print, you are going to want to wait for it to dry. Usually the next day is good. And then you can iron or heat press over the top until the fabric is too hot to the touch. And then you know that it's going to be washable. I would recommend when you are mixing these inks that you have a scrap piece of fabric on hand to test the colours because they're not necessarily going to look how they look in the pot when you've printed them on your fabric. These colours are very translucent and so they're going to look slightly different on your fabric. So what I like to do is use a spatula just to smooth a thin layer of ink onto the fabric to just test it. Some of the colours look quite deceptive in the pot because they are translucent. You might think you have a really dark colour but actually it's paler. So those are my two shades there. That's more accurate representation of how they look when they're printed. We have these water-based pre-mixed fabric screen printing inks, as well as the different kinds of binders and all of these pigments in lots of shades on our website, handprinted.co.uk, and all the other screen printing and printmaking materials that you may need for your upcoming projects. Happy printing. Ping.